Telegram for George Wilson. Mr. Wilson lives next door, but I'll take it over to him. Okay, sign here. Sure. Uh-oh. You, Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson! What? <laughs> you got a telegram. Uh, give me that. You have just won first prize in the Feather Down Pillow Company sweepstakes. I won! I won. I never won anything in my life. It says to pick up your prize at the airport. I bet you want a trip to someplace. The airport? Of course. Now I remember. The prize was a trip for two to Hawaii. Oh, wow. Can I go to the airport with you? Oh, well, why not? Nothing could ruin the great mood I'm in. I'm George Wilson. I've come to claim my prize. Oh, yes. We've been expecting you. I'll be right back with it. Imagine, Dennis. Hawaii. White sandy beaches. Warm, balmy nights. Beautiful hula dancers. Huh? huh? That's funny. I thought they didn't allow cars on the beach. Yeah! What's this thing? It's your prize, of course. An authentic feather down goose. A goose? But what about my trip to Hawaii? No, no. The trip to Hawaii is second prize. The goose is first prize. What am I going to do with this overstuffed feather duster? You should have thought about that before you entered the contest. Look, she just laid an egg. That settles it. I'm going to call her Georgette. I don't think Georgette likes being cooped up in a cage all day. I know, Peavy. I wish I could take her to Uncle Charlie's farm. Only Mr. Wilson would miss her. What if Mr. Wilson doesn't know she's gone? Come on, Dennis. I've got an idea. That invention of yours sure looks like Georgette, but what are we going to do with these eggs? The eggs go in here, right next to the built-in radio receiver. Every morning, Georgette II will lay an egg. That ought to fool Mr. Wilson. Now let's switch them. Come on, Georgette. We're going to the country. Lunch time, Georgette. Uh-oh, it's Mr. Wilson. We'd better hide. Uh -oh. A fine thing. A grown man having a goose for a pet. He probably doesn't even know me. No! Well, she knows me all right. What? It's getting away. Make it stop, Peavy. I can't. It won't respond to the remote control instructions. I've got you now, you flapping fluff ball. <laughs> Come back here, you feathery fugitive! Oh! Ow! Oh no! My prize-winning petunias! That's it! No more Mr. Nice Guy! Your goose is cooked! Aha! back down here where you belong. Yeah. Out! Ow! Ow! Oh, oh. Gee, Mr. Wilson, you look like an omelet. Stand back, boys. Look at Pops and Pin Feathers. That goose is a goner. No, Mr. Wilson, don't! Gotcha! Yeah, what have I done? It's okay, Mr. Wilson. It was only a robot. I wanted to take Georgette to Uncle Charlie's farm, so she wouldn't have to be cooped up in a cage. So I built you a robot goose to take her place. Then Georgette's not? Heck no! Here, Georgette! Georgette, oh, am I glad to see you. Yeah. Hey, uh, 
let go of my finger. It was nice of you to come along and keep Dennis company, Gina. No problem, Mrs. Mitchell. Come along, Dennis. We mustn't keep Aunt Evelyn waiting. Oh, gee, do I have to? Yes, you have to. Something wrong, son? There sure is. Would you walk around in public wearing this wimpy outfit? You're asking someone who's dressed like an organ grinder's monkey. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, wow, Gina. A revolving door. I just love those things. <laughs> Kids, they sure know how to have fun. <laughs> Where's Aunt Evelyn? She said she'd meet us on the main floor. But where? It's so large. Paging Mr. Barton. Please, Please come, come to the reception, reception desk. I'll get her for you. Paging Aunt Evelyn. Please, Please come, come to the reception desk. desk. Psst, you're looking for Aunt Evelyn? Yeah. You know where she is? <laughs> you're quite a kidder. <laughs> Here's the message. What do you suppose this is? Yoo-hoo! Oh, Dennis! There you are, my darling little man. <laughs> oh, there you are, Aunt Evelyn. I see Dennis found you. When you're as big as she is, it's kind of hard not to. Uh, uh, I'm simply starving. Let's chat over lunch, shall we? What a splendid idea. How could you be so stupid as to give that kid the secret message? Well, how should I know he wasn't our contact? He gave the right code, Boyd. Aunt Evelyn. Well, we've got to get it back one way or the other. Thanks for lunch, Aunt Evelyn. Mom, can we have some quarters? You never know when you'll run into some video games. Allow me, Alice. I simply love spoiling my nieces and nephews. Gee. Thanks, Aunt Evelyn. It's my pleasure, darling. Mm. Okay, let's get that kid. A waiter. Huh? More coffee, please. Great. They fell for that waiter's outfit you're wearing. Er, uh, <laughs> coming right up, madam. What are you doing? Oops. Uh, uh, sorry, madam. <laughs> Honestly, the service in this hotel has deteriorated terribly. Wow, look at that. A swimming pool for lobsters. Boy, there's a really ugly one. Do you suppose they'd sell me one for a pet? Oops. It rolled away. I have no idea, but I'm glad that for once Dennis isn't involved. Wow, an Olympic-sized banister. Well, what are we waiting for? Yay! That's it, you little brats. I'm waiting for you. Wow. <laughs> ah. Now that's what I call service. Hey, what happened to the other doorman? I'll ask the questions from now on. So, you want to play games, eh? Oh, boy, they want to play games with us. This hotel really is neat. Let's play hide and seek. 
They mustn't get away! Shrek! What floor are you going to press? All of them! That way they'll never find us! Code in third. You have been security cleared for top secret sub-level. Ah! We're falling! Hang on, Gina! I don't know, but we're here. And it's got lots of neat hiding places. Well, we better find one quick. Here come those two guys. How did they know the secret elevator code? I don't know. We better find them before they wreck the entire operation. Try and find a light switch so we can see where we are. Here's one. Look, it's mm. that nice doorman. He's trying to tell us something. What happened to you, mister? I was kidnapped by two strange men. You've got to call the police. Okay, we're on our way. You idiots. How could you give the transmission code to the wrong person? Especially to a little kid. <laughs> it's a natural mistake, boss. He gave me the right code name. Some kind of code. Without that code, we can't tap into the television networks and transmit our brainwashing signals. Brainwashing? I don't like the sound of that. I don't like the sound of anything that's got to do with the washing. I can see it now. The entire world obeying my every command. I'll be the most powerful man on Earth. <laughs> now find those kids. What a dingbat. That guy's got to be stopped. By who? Oh. You? Got him. Good work. Now get that code. Right, boss. <gasps> Give up, kid. There's no place to run now. Oh! trapped in here. Hmm, I never thought of that. How do we get out? Maybe we could send out a message on TV or something. How do we do that? I'll try using the secret code. Maybe something will happen. Dennis, it's working! Quick, let's send out a message. Attention TV viewers. This is Dennis Mitchell and Gina Gelati. We're trapped in the basement of the Ritzy Hotel. I can't understand where they could have disappeared to. Now, Alice. You know children. I also know Dennis. Why, Alice? You never told me that Dennis was a television star. What on earth? And please hurry. We can't hold the bad guys off forever. And they're getting real crazy. Bad guys? What bad guys? It's time to put an end to your interference. So I suggest you sign off. It's all over now. <laughs> it's over, all right. For you. Kids. That was quick thinking, kids. Putting yourselves on television? Did you hear that, Mom? We were on TV. I know. We saw you. Yeah, but we didn't. I'm sure they'll run it on the 11 o'clock news. Big deal. We're not allowed to stay up that late. Well, maybe we'll make an exception. Just tonight. Yay, Mom! Way to go! Oh, my hey. brave, precious little nephew. Uh, oh, gee, Aunt Evelyn, everybody's watching. Look at it this way, Dennis. It's better than being captured by bad guys. That's what we're you doing. Think. Dennis. Take me 
out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. I don't care if I never get back. <laughs> My George, I've never seen you so chipper. Well, why shouldn't I be? A box seat ticket right back of home plate on a perfect day for baseball. Or it's root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. Well, it takes so little to please them. to the crowd. Hey! Oh, what a time to drop my ticket. Now, where'd that thing go? Aha! Uh -huh. It's Joey! Gotcha. What in Jehoshaphat is going on? Sorry, Mr. Wilson. I thought you were Joey. Yes, lots of people get us mixed up. Well, at least I found my ticket. I must get going now if I want to catch the ball game in time. Bye, Mr. Wilson! Come on up there, move it! I'll miss the opening pitch! And I want to hear them sing the Star Strangled Banner. Yeah, that's right, me too. Dennis! Hi, Mr. Wilson. Why didn't you tell me that you were in the back seat? Because you might have told Gina. Are you going to take me home now? No way. By the time I got back here, the game would be over. I guess there's only one thing to do then. Right, Mr. Wilson? Uh, I guess so. That's right, Henry. The baseball game. Well, sure you can, George. That's awfully nice of you. I think the heat is getting to poor George. He asked if he could take Dennis to the baseball game. Isn't it fun, Mr. Wilson? No, it's costing me a fortune. I had to pay $20 for your seat. Not to mention another $20 for a seat to hold all those hot dogs and root beers and candy bars and peanuts and popcorn you've been eating. Mmm, all that talk about food made me hungry again. Can I have some ice cream? My eyes can watch much better if my mouth is kept busy. Oh, all right. <laughs> Today is not my lucky day. An ice cream cone, please. You know, we have uh, great hot dogs, if you like. No, thanks. Just an ice cream cone. And hurry, please. I'm missing the game. All right, it's coming. Here it is, mister. One ice cream cone. Thanks. Oh, no. Not now. Hey, mister, you forgot to pay. Oh, no. Ah, sorry, mister. Here's your ice cream. Enjoy it, because it's your last one. Thanks, Mr. Wilson. You know, you missed a great hit. You should have seen the guy. Don't rub it in. Now let me concentrate on the game. It's the last of the ninth, and the bases are full. What a game it's been today. Lefty Malone is at the plate. The count is two balls and no strike. Malone, you're a bum. You couldn't hit the side of a barn. Here, Mr. Wilson, you can have this. Why, how sweet of you, Dennis. You want to share it with me. That's not why. There's a bee on it. I'll remember this, Fatso. Mr. Wilson, did you see the way that guy hit a grand slam homer? No, I was at the first aid station getting this beast ink treated. Look, Mr. Wilson, it's Lefty Malone, the guy you called a bum. Hey, where, where are you taking me? I want to get his autograph. Hi, Mr. Malone, can I have your autograph? Now, Dennis, Mr. Malone is a very busy man. Wait a minute, I remember you. You're the bozo who dumped the ice cream down my back. Oh, huh? no, you see, what happened was... He also said you couldn't hit the side of a barn. Oh, he did, eh? Well, no, you see, what I meant was... Mister, you're gonna see how good I am at hitting. Uh -huh. I had root beer and ice cream and hot dogs and popcorn. And best of all, I saw this guy park one downtown. Oh, wow, what a lookout. That's nothing. The really lucky guy was Mr. Wilson. He got a souvenir from Lefty Malone himself. Oh, 
boy left him alone. I'd sure like to see that. Okay, but you'll have to hurry. The doctor said it'll only last a couple of weeks. Oh. Uh.